Are you ready? What's my name? What's my, what's my name? What's, say Kareem Miley. Say Kareem Miley. You're listening to the Hip Hop Debate Show. Okay, so hear me out. The official podcast of Kareem Miley. In about two seconds, Kareem Miley will begin to speak. Okay. Okay, Kareem Ali, Kareem Ali TV. This is the Are You Serious podcast. Today I got my man <laughs> Andre Wright. We used to know him as Hustle Man, the self proclaimed contrarian and one of Baltimore's biggest assholes. Love you, my G, you my guy. <laughs> I need a better intro. You gotta work on that. <laughs> You're my guy. I fucks with you. We also got the man of many names for Pittsburgh, PA, but a Baltimore City oh, legend. Hi. Um, Slick Vic Low, Slankston Hughes, oh, the Lyrical Leviathan. Hey, hi, how you doing? Yes. And we also have kids <laughs> in the way of the yes, show, but we love it. No. Kareem Ali no, love the kids. No, Sometimes. Oh, oh, no. I hate the kids. <laughs> <laughs> they got my man. <laughs> so the first time okay. on the show today, we got we got my guy, one of the uh, one of the best artists that I've heard in in Baltimore City. Um, and, I, and, I, and I got I got to know him a little bit throughout the 2000s when I used to pick up all his records and he's actually known as one of the best live performers in Baltimore City history in my opinion and he's become one of the best producers. I still got some beats that I've rap to that have I haven't paid him for so I need <laughs> I need to start cash apping to him right away. We got my man Jamba One, the very entertaining, very excited Jamba One on the show today. <laughs> All right, so today's topic, who had the better debut album? Was it Snoop Doggy Dog with Doggy Style? I believe that came out in 1993. Or was it Only Built for Cuban Links with Raekwon, co-starring Ghostface? Was that 93 or 94? I don't recall, but it was about the same time I think period. it was 94. It was 94. It was 94. Yeah, it was 94. Yeah. Both of these albums are all-time classic albums, great music at a time in hip-hop where the commercialism had met the creativity and everything was on a high level. And it was the soundtrack mm -hmm. to a lot of our lives. Two different coasts, two different regions, two different styles, mm -hmm. two different approaches to music. What was the better album? Who had the better debut album? Not the better career, not who was the better MC, but who had the better album? And uh, you know what, Dre, uh, this is a topic that uh, that you kind of conceived in your mind. Uh, you got your asshole Jesus flowing. I want to know what you think about it, Dre. <laughs> how do you feel about this? Uh, you know, how, how do I come in after such a uh, a rousing introduction? I actually am not a contrarian on this one. I feel like everyone really knows Dougie Style is the better album from it actually delivering on the promise of what Snoop Dogg was supposed to be coming off of his uh, deep cover and chronic uh, tracks. It was like the same excitement you got when you knew 50 Cent was coming, the same excitement you got when you knew Kendrick was coming, you knew something special was going to happen with this album. With Raekwon, we kind of, we knew it was going to be fire because of the role the rule was on. We just didn't know it was going to be that because you're talking about this is what, after uh, Jizza and after um, Meth. So you're like, those two are buying it. This has to be a jam. So... It was kind of like expected ways with Dougie Style. We didn't really know what we were going to get. We didn't really know how it was going to be. I think Dougie Style is a better collection of Dre beats over the chronic to me as far as the way it was sequenced and put in order. You got to see Dre and Warren G really flex on what they were trying to create with their sound. And I think that's what really pushes Dougie Style over the top. I never thought I would say this, but I can't disagree. <laughs> One iota. I, I believe that you're absolutely correct in what you said, but we'll see uh, what these other two <laughs> hip hop historian connoisseurs think. Jammer One, first time mm -hmm. on the show. What do you think about this? What do you think is the better album, Jammer? You know what's crazy? Um, back in those days, I was I was kind of like anti West Coast. If they wasn't spitting some hard bars and lyrics, you know, I I just didn't really care for it too much. Um, I did like the Far Side and I did like Hieroglyphics because they had that East Coast sort of flair to them. So I love those types of West Coast acts. Yeah, the East but Coast But the bias. more like commercialized stuff, I was okay. like, eh, 
I, I was hating hard oh, on it. Hi. But as time m- moved on and I went back and I listened to a lot of that stuff, I have a greater appreciation for it. So 19-year-old Jammer One back in um, 1994 would have been all about Cuban links. Like straight up and down, like no doggy style cannot get with this. It's lyrically better, the beats are harder, you know, it's Wu-Tang. But, you know, like the grown up version of me, I would have to give it the doggy style because it's sonically impressive. Um, A lot of the topics, like a lot of, it, it was fun in a lot of ways, like songs, like it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and, and I, I agree. I agree with Andre. Like, I think I would have to say that Doggy Style is ultimately the better album. <clears throat> Dre, you picked a good one, but Slankster, we have to go to you, Slick Vic Low. How did, with your super hip hop sensibilities of high level <laughs> content, high level rhyme and lyrical construction, <laughs> killer priest loving cannabis. Worship an ass nigga. What do you think about <laughs> Wow. Listen. Wow. When you first introduced this as the topic for the episode, um, my immediate reaction is very much, are y'all fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> However, that was my immediate reaction. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized this is so close. Like, this is actually so close me it is close um, it's, it's very close. close they're definitely both classics um <laughs> if you were to and so if i'm not mistaken oh, doggy style hi. came out earlier like early in the year yes yes mm-hmm. Cuban Links came out no, no, later. 93 right and then yeah. cuba links came after the jizza after right. nicholas swords right. after old odb i believe right. um and so um if you ask me at the, at the time when doggy style first came out me then, I was in sixth grade, and and I saw the video for you know Snoop Doggy Dog and him turning yeah, into a right. goddamn Darv Doberman pitcher and shit, and, <laughs> and you know all the West Coast mm-hmm. stuff at the time. You know I thought it was the coolest shit ever. Like they're gangsters who rap, and so I even had made a cassette tape of my own rapping into the speaker of the boombox. The cassette tape was called Slick Thick the Crip. Um, which made no sense whatsoever because the cassette tape itself was red and black. <laughs> and it was terrible. It was, it was, just, it was me mimicking like That's what slick I saw Vic the in, crack, like, though. <laughs> in, in Easy E videos. It, it was terrible. But do you still have it? Do you still have it? I do not. I do not. Um, my aunt, saw it, <laughs> my aunt <laughs> saw it on the floor and was like, what is this shit? And threw it away. <laughs> I would have loved to hear the bars. Oh man, it, it was very early on. It was it was it was it was, it was, it was awful. It was absolutely awful, and it was just me rapping about killing people, and I'd never killed any people. And so, but by the time at that know, time, had, but since later then, later have you uh, grade, taken a life? Not, hey, hey, no, we don't answer those questions. <laughs> have you watched the shade room? This is where rappers get caught up. Don't say that. <laughs> I tried. To, I tried to go and give you a little Vlad there, like no, <laughs> stop it, Vlad. Fast forward a few months later, though, the day that I saw the video for Wu-Tang Clan Ain't Nothing to Fuck With on Rap City, my life was never the same after that. And all of a sudden, everything shifted. It was like, oh, shit, these are ninjas who rap. This is way better. Yeah. (laughs) And so, so, for me, though it's close, for me, um, it's Cuban Links that I would say is the superior record. Here's why. Um, and, and I'm definitely East Coast biased. Um, I'm definitely biased to the style of that album. And I mean, it's an incredible con- comparison, and it's such a dunkster position in styles. You're talking about funk Dr. Dre versus like early gritty rhythm. And it's like so different. One is very clean, polished production. One is that gritty East Coast stuff with the, you know, the, the EQ on all the drums and everything. And so if, if you grew up listening to that shit and developing your own style like, after, like I did, you're going to be biased to it. But even if you look at Doggy Style, like, okay, it's a very successful commercial record and a creative record. Cuban Links was successful in its own right as well. Like, Ice Cream beat out KRS One's MCs act like they don't. Um, MCs uh, act, act like, like they, they don't know. know. 
Like it beat out that for the number one spot on Rap City. I remember six weeks in a row. <laughs> and I was like, Chris can't get the number one spot. And it's in its, in its name because the cream joint was just smashing every freaking week. And then you had Glaciers of Ice, you had Incarcerated Scarfaces, like all of these joints, all of these singles, like they, they charted, like they were, were destroying. Um, and so it was successful commercially and creatively. And then if you listen to it top to bottom, I think it's a better album, like from song to song, end to end. And then I think personally, I like the production style better. Lyrically, I like Raekwon and Ghost is doing lyrically a little more That's than Snoop. This was like prime it. Snoop. This was the version of Snoop that I only it. got later on with the freestyle. He was still <laughs> spitting like that on his songs. Go play. Go play. So I think it's close, but for me, yeah, go get Lyrically, no, um, no, I think for me, you know, as a, as a straightforward like hip hop record, he captured the sound no. of New come York here, in that era. RZA at his apex when he was just making crazy beats that nobody ever heard the likes of before. And even like you talk about the sampling, all Dre was doing was you know taking like fucking hella records and putting some drums under him. RZA was chopping shit up a lot more. He was doing a lot more with his. Hold on, one second. Wait, wait, wait. Let you go for a second. I feel like that's an oversimplification of what Dre was doing. It's really not. Because when his when his production started to get more complex to that than that, mostly it really wasn't him doing it after that point. If you really go back and look at the history. No, no not, not Puff. Puffy, was, Puffy wasn't doing too. anything. Puffy was telling somebody else with the sample and then putting his name on it. <laughs> Puffy wasn't doing shit. But Dre, you know, Dre was <laughs> Dre was doing. Dre was basically doing the really melodic stuff that, like, that like you know, like Millie Mel and some of them, and had done earlier on the East Coast. And he was giving it. He was sampling different kind of records. So, so is, this really, is this really a battle between who's the better producer between Dr. Dre and as RZA? A record, I like the production slightly be. better because I think the production was more complex on Cuban Links, and I, lyrically, I think you know the writing was a little more complex. And so it's close, but with, with my bias attached to those reasons, I go Cuban Links. At least you admit your bias. You know, yeah, I mean, uh, I can't ignore the bias. Like Wu Tang literally shifted true. my existence into a whole other stratosphere. One second. And you're talking about the core of that era. Eoji and Pan's beard grooming kit. You all make decisions every day. What kind of man do you want to be? Commercial. Had a commercial break in there. Got to satisfy my sponsors. What are everybody to go? Because, you know, your beard, it'd be, it's dirty. You got shit in it and stuff. You got to clean it out. This is stuff. You got to comb it. Take care of it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm still trying to grow the the, reason you brought me on. No, no, put the bit, no, no, brother, but it's good. You should probably go out and get you a kit. I think it's uh, what are you tell me? It's $49.95. Yoji and Pants Outfit Omega Beard Grooming Kit for men. It's got a, it's got its own comb. You would love it, my brother. You would love it. You probably need it. You probably got fecal matter in your beard that you didn't clean out. And so I think that fecal <laughs> matter. It's possible. I mean, it's in there. It's you not. Take a shit. It's not. If they, if they put your beard underneath a microscope, now I, can't have... I can't tell my mom to watch this now. She won't do it differently. I'm about to drink paper cups at her house. It's not good. <laughs> All right. So back to the Snoop and uh and uh Raekwon. I mean, I just felt like Doggy Style was a better album, not by a lot, just by a little bit. I felt like the the musicality that Dr. Dre presented. Um, just had it. I just felt like he had a better ear for music. It was uh, the groove of it, the feeling of the songs. I thought it was just better song writing, but it's two totally different styles, so it's even harder to say yeah. that. It's, it's hard yeah, to really, it's really be hard subjective to it. about objective about it. It's like a subjective thing. It's all about what you like, but they produce two different moves, so if I'm in a particular type of mood, I'm probably going to go for the Raekwon joint for Cuban Links, but but I think uh, doggy style my per- is much more. My fun. personal taste, my personal taste was Cuban links. But my personal taste is actually doggy judge... style in this situation, and I'm an yeah. East Coast dude too. But I just thought yeah. doggy style was a better. It made a bigger impact on me at what was like 12 years old with dog, 11, 12 years old with doggy style came out. The Slick mm. Rick remix, Lottie Dottie, we likes the party, the Snoop version. Yeah. Uh, I, I just. I don't know. It just has so many bangers and so many memorable records, even the way it came on. Like the way they created albums back then, especially uh, coming out of, I guess it was Death Row and Not Aftermath at that point, it felt like a movie. It was very cinematic. It was a story in the music yeah. videos of movies. I just, because Doggy Style looked like a continuation of The Chronic. I just felt like right, it all it had was. to say. I just couldn't. It was a, it was a movement. 
and it was cinematic for me. I mean, but you could say the same thing about Wu Tang because all those like first six records from Return of the Thirty Six Chambers all the way to Wu Tang Forever and all the records in between the Iron Man and Liquid Swords, they were all like. Wu Tang records, and it was a collective story, which each co each star having a particular episode within that story, and that was just a great movement as well. So this this one kind of actually blows my mind. I prefer Doggy Style. I agree with Dre, but it's it's very tough for me. It's not like an easy thing. I can't just say it and stand yeah. on it as a keep I mean, was a shit. I've probably listened to Doggy Style five times, top back to forth over the years. I've listened to the Purple Tape easily 50 times plus. I listen to Dog yeah, same with me. I, I like so. I like intellectual music, so of course I'm going to like Purple Tape more so than Doggy Style. So but you don't want to hear about fucking doggy is what you're style. saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's fun. It's fun to listen to, you know, when you're in the mood, like when you about to go out to the club or whatever, and when you out and it comes on in the club or when you're driving in the car or something. Right. But, you know, like, yeah, man. You know, I, I tend to gravitate more to intellectual stuff. Okay, so that's, that's a personal, you know, choice. Dre, what yeah. what would you say? How would you like to end this off? I, yeah, I want you to have a. I'm here for the fuck shit. <laughs> the hoes. I, I remember telling my mama listening to Murder the Case, like, Mama, he really killed somebody. And yeah, we really like, thought that. We really I, thought they I was really killing back then. Yeah. The, the, the original C murder. <laughs> yeah, he was like, it was. I believed everything that he said. I, I, only thing I didn't do was drink the gin and juice because gin's just terrible as a drink. Um, but everything else, I was like, oh man, this is the life. It made California look so amazing. How old were you back then? Yeah. This is 93. I was 12. 11, 12 oh, okay. years old. Oh, y'all were around. Yeah, no, I, I, I just yeah. look old, brother. I'm not really old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a life, same, man. Right. Baltimore streets age you like a puppy. And maybe really because you don't properly clean your beard. Yoji, I feel no Beard groovy kid. <laughs> what kind of bad do you want to be? <laughs> wow. That could be wild. I mean, but, but Dre, I, I mean, I do like, like Jam has said, I like intellectual music too. I like the type of music I like to do is heavily intellectual, probably too much so to a fault where, you know, just probably don't even enjoy the shit after a while. Even I don't enjoy <laughs> It was good for that first time, the second time, like, nigga, I learned something, but you ain't gonna bump it. But Cuban Links was a great album. I'm not going to pretend like it wasn't. I just personally preferred Doggy Style with where I was in my life at that time. And even when I listen to it now, I listen to Doggy Style every couple years. I still do. Um, mm. Cuban Links. Yeah, same here. Cuban Links is a great album. I mean, I, I, a lot of people place it up there. They put it over Illmatic and other records and ready to die. I don't know about that, but you know what I'm I saying? Mean, like you, know you, what say, album, you know what album is classic, right? When you buy it like three times, yeah. and every time you bought it, somebody was like, "Can I borrow it?" and they never gave right, it back, right. or they <laughs> stole it from, or somebody came to your crib and took it. <laughs> I bought the right. purple tape three times, and it had, and somebody always got it from me. It it's crazy. legendary. The purple tape, you know, purple tape yeah. is on eBay right now for like two fifty. It's a set, <laughs> like it's like two fifty, two hundred and fifty dollars, two hundred fifty dollars. Wow, yeah. two hundred and fifty. Wow, I might, I might buy that joint to play it in here. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> he pulled out a cassette. Uh, I don't know. Yo, but I mean, like you said though, like it's it's a lot about you know what people's tastes are too. Even if you're just talking about the musical aspect, because when you talk to people who are like really aficionados of like hip hop and specifically hip hop production. A lot of times it's looked at as lesser if you can listen to the song and you know what they sample. You listen to those tracks on Doggy Style, you know what Funkadelic Records those are from. If you listen to, you know, Incarcerated Star Faces, you're like, I don't know what he sampled to make this beat probably. So I'm this a, shit is crazy. I'm gonna give you a little pushback though. From a hip hop standpoint, for people that are really deep into production and are into the art form, that I would agree with you. But the casual fan, they just want to enjoy themselves. A lot of people oh, don't, yeah. don't even know about music. They don't even give a fuck about it. They, yeah. they had no idea where that stuff came from. They didn't know who George Clinton was. I mean, I kind of knew, but not as much. This nigga just left in the middle of the 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean, like you said, it, it, it depends beard. on who's listening to. Yeah, it. I mean, so, yeah, exactly. so, but if it sounds good, I mean, it's it's a cheat code. Like all that stuff Puffy used to do in the nineties, I used to get so irritated because it was just like you just took the fucking song. <laughs> yeah. But, but I would long to go back to a time with that type of music because I just felt like it was major, it was feel good music. The familiarity of it is what gets stuff to sell and get people to connect yeah. with it. Sometimes yeah. so they already the, know the where about, it came from. The thing about Puff is he admittedly said that he was using the West Coast formula because that's what mm -hmm. they was doing on the West Coast, just mm -hmm. taking the joints, looping them. They might have added like some more claps to it or something, but they, you know, they just a lot of times yeah. they just remade the song. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, like, cause he had a team of like three or four producers. If I'm not mistaken, some of those dudes were from California, and that's why he grabbed them, cause he was like, "Yo, I'm trying to do some of what y'all doing out there." Mm. Yeah. Mm. Vic, I know your beard is a little dry, but kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> he holds your pants, Alfred Omega. Yeah, I might, I might get up on some Alfred Omega. You know, <laughs> I got a whole kit of some other shit too, but I haven't even used that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Special breaches and all. All right, so I think that's all. I mean, I, it's really nothing else to be said about this. I think it's just divided loyalties. It's kind of just what you like. I think the albums are to maybe the same level. I would prefer Doggy Style a little bit, but it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. So it's not really. I don't think it's really a right or wrong answer here. But this is the one time that I'm going with Dre on this one. Not the one time. It's just the first time. <laughs> I think it's the eh, it's the one time, bro. I don't think it's gonna be too many more situations where you know uh, no. I'm gonna agree with you. What do you got against Dre? Not the just, one time. He's, he's just always he's always wrong. It's just so irritating. No, <laughs> most of, I don't even think a lot of my viewpoints are edgy or controversial. It's just right. Like if I tell you it was written as better than Illmatic. I can back that up a little that's bit. That's a whole nother that's a whole nother episode. I've heard but, that stated. But we're gonna go there. And, and what I'm gonna say, I'm not even gonna say it right now. I'm gonna save it so I can punish you with it later. Um so Kareem Ali TV, are you serious podcast? Are you serious? Very serious. Why, why does it take you so fucking long to say the, the close <laughs> the experiment so with different <laughs> different ways to say it? <laughs> great. We out. So I have to stand here today as what I was when I was born, a black man. Your racism bounces off me, I'm bulletproof. Your prejudice gets deflected, I'm bulletproof. Your hatred can't penetrate me, I'm bulletproof. Our minds can't be shackled no more, nah, we know the truth. Yeah, from the spot that Malcolm stood.